picture cards up now. enjoyed our little activity that we prepared for you. So I want you to think a little bit about the question that we have on the screen. So who was playing the game? So do you think you were playing the game? No. So you, you were involved in the game, that's sure, but who was actually controlling the game? Who was making the pedals on the screen move? Okay, so think about this. But before we, we dive into this more philosophical question, uh, let me just lay down to you which were the rules of the game. So the rules of the game were very simple. We basically had two rules. The audience was divided in two, and the left side of the audience controlled the left pedal, and the right side of the audience controlled the right pedal. That's rule number one. And then rule number two, what determined the position of the pedal vertically on the screen was the ratio of the blue and red cards being shown. So if you wanted, to place the pedal on top of the screen, all of you had, had to be showing the, the red card. And if you wanted to place the pedal on bottom, all of you had to be showing the blue card. Now, if you wanted to, to place the pedal in the middle of the screen, you had to divide yourselves equally between the number of blue and red, pedal, and red cards. So, so that's the rules of the games. And how did you play this? So basically, each of you had a decision. 
Should I put the blue or the red? So maybe in the beginning this was a random decision. After a while, you started realizing what the people around you were doing and how this affected the mechanics of the game. So basically, in this case, if you're controlling the right pedal, you want to move the right pedal down. So you want to place a blue card. So you do this and uh, you actually manage to, to play the game. Um, what happened is that um, none of you individually was controlling, but was this global consensus that each half of the audience, that it emerged from each half of the audience that controlled the pedal. And in, more importantly, there was, although there were some people shouting uh, which was the card <laughs> that you should place, uh, each of you individually made that decision based on the information that you had. So let's get back to the million dollar question of who uh, was actually controlling the game. And what controlled the game was the pattern of blue and red that you all formed. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the second R event. Uh, my name is Tiago, I'll be your host during this evening. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Neuroscience Program, and tonight we'll be talking about emergence. So, we, we have the pleasure of having three great speakers uh, between us that will be talking about their work. So, first, uh, you'll hear about uh, we'll, you'll hear Manuel uh, Marques Pita, um, and, uh, who's a postdoc at Instituto Cubenca de Ciencia. It will be followed by José Leal, a group leader also at Instituto Cubenca de Ciencia. And finally, Deborah Gordon, a professor at Stanford University. Uh, so, if we want to start talking about emergence, uh, one should start by patterns. So, basically, there are patterns everywhere, all around you. Maybe you haven't realized, but patterns are part of our lives. And let's, let's, let's do this exercise. Let's take a walk uh, at a garden. So you, you go to a garden and you see patterns in flowers. And you see these amazing, beautiful structures that appear throughout nature. These highly organized, that they seem that someone drew them. Someone exactly made them as if they were works of art. And it, it's quite amazing how defined they are. In, even, even in things that you would eat. And you also have patterns in animals beautiful patterns in animals that appear. And, and one might think, who built these patterns? Who, who, how are these patterns created? How are they formed? And we, we also have patterns in, in water uh, crystals and a, a variety of different shapes and forms. And it's just amazing how they appear in nature and without us knowing exactly uh, how, how they appear, what created them. And also hurricanes and even the shapes of galaxies, they have these different patterns. And there are also other kind of patterns. So take this flock of birds, for example, all moving collectively as if they were one single body. What makes these birds all move within the same direction and have these unique shapes and they don't clash between themselves and yet they are able to, represent, to be represented as a single entity? Do you think that there's a bird over there shouting to all the other birds where to, where to move? <laughs> I, I, th I think it's highly unlikely. So, so our, how do these patterns emerge? Well, I, I'm sure that most, many of you are thinking that there's something behind these patterns, like a mastermind that is controlling the patterns, uh, that there's a sort of um, maestro that is conducting an orchestra and that is telling these patterns how to behave. Well, I, I don't think so. And, and for me, this is what makes this question interesting. And this is what emergence is about, to try to answer how these patterns appear in a scientific manner. Uh, so this is very hard, uh, and usually in science, when we want to tackle a question, we, we tend to, to go to, to use computer models. Uh, and, and we can also build patterns in computers. And what you have here, you see some patterns that were made in computers, and some of them even have this resemble the, the water crystals that I've shown you before. Now, there's no big deal about these patterns, we, we can make patterns in computers, but someone could, could have drawn the patterns. But what's, what's amazing about these patterns that I've just shown you is that no one explicitly programmed. The, the, these pictures that I've just shown you, they all emerge from these simple local rules. Okay, this might be a little bit confusing, so I want you to bear uh, with me over the next couple of slides where we're gonna address this. So imagine that we have this two-dimensional world that is basically these this styles of we call them cells, they're just basically these squares. Now, these squares can be either on or off. And if you also look, you'll see that each, each square is, has eight neighbors, so three on top, three at the bottom, and two, uh, one at each side. 
And I'm just gonna tell you that there are just two simple rules. So this, uh, the activation of these cells will evolve with time, and when we have a non-cell that, that has less than two and more than three on neighbors, it gets switched off. And it's what happens with this red cell here. And the second rule is when you have an off cell with exactly three on neighbors, it gets switched on. So just these two rules, and what's important about these rules is that they, these are only local interactions. Each cell only sees the eight neighbors around them. And the, the second important thing is that there's no central control, there's no mastermind, there's no one designing the shapes that will appear in these cells. And, and just with these simple rules, amazing, just incredible patterns emerge, just depending on the initial conditions. And if you don't believe me, you have to watch this video. All the patterns that we're going to see here, all this variety of forms, uh, all these different dynamics, uh, the, way, the way they evolve, they are just consequence of those two simple rules applied to different initial conditions. And, and it's just amazing that these highly structured um, uh, organizations appear out of nowhere with each cell only seeing their eight neighbors. So, okay, what have we learned so far? Uh, we have this idea that global patterns may emerge when you have a complex uh, network of individuals that are interacting locally. Uh, okay, that's basically another idea is what we see on the big scale is a consequence of what's happening on the small scale. Well, this may be true for computers, but is this also true to all the other patterns we see in nature? So all the patterns that we saw in the first video that I presented to you. Uh, I mean, reality is not a computer game. So uh, is there any use of building these models? Well, so what is reality? Let's just take a quick tour to reality. So on the deep, on the bottom of everything, we have atoms. So atoms uh, constitute all matter that exists in the world. And then when you have atoms interacting locally, molecules emerge. And here we can see DNA, a very complex molecule and important for life. And when you have these molecules interacting, cells emerge. And the cells may be living beings on their own. Uh, here we see a, a bacteria, that it's a living uh, organism or they can also be part of, of a multicellular organism. And here we see a neuron, uh, as uh, Tiago explained to you in the, during the first R event, it's a very special cell. And, and these neurons, when they interact with other neurons, they form these neural networks. And basically, our brain is just a very complex ensemble of neural networks. And what emerged from the brain is basically who we are. So our consciousness, our perceptions, our memories, our feelings, even our imagination and creativity, these are all consequence of all these networks of neurons interacting. And this is very, very amazing to me, and this is why I, I, I decided to study neuroscience. And, and what would happen if, if we were able to step out of, of our um, perspective and get a, a broader view? So what would happen if we would, would be able to see all the networks of humans interacting? then maybe we would see different patterns emerging. Uh, here, basically, the free, the supposedly free market is when you have these uh, market players interacting between themselves and the, it, they're supposed to set the fair price of a good. Uh, and we also have social networks that recently gained a lot of interest because of the internet. And we also get patterns in traffic. So all these patterns, all these structures emerge from humans interacting. So what have Basically, we see emergence across all scales. And, and while it's true that in many of the situations that I described, we already, we know, uh, we can explain the patterns we see on a bigger scale, basically on the rules and, and, and the interactions on the lower scale, there are many things we still don't know. Um, and yeah, our current state, of, current state of the art is that basically, in terms, for example, the brain, how the brain works, we're still in the beginning of these questions. Uh, what is important for you to realize is that if you want to see emergence happening, you have to step out of your perspective and, be, and take a look at the broader picture. And so thank you very much for being here tonight.